Hello ladies and gentlemen of YouTube. Time for another Metal Earth build. This is another one from Halo to get things caught back up. I have the Assault Rifle. Now this feels like it's just one sheet. I haven't really, I probably looked online but I've forgotten by this point. And so you'd think it wouldn't be that complicated but with all the ways and different shapes and little bitty parts I think it will be a certain amount of challenge to it. But, as always, let's tear this open, see what's inside, and put it together. The Assault Rifle. What am I in store for here? And, just one sheet. So maybe this won't be too terribly complicated. Put that aside, open up the instructions. front page. As always, starting with page one, we have the Metal Earth, the logo, the 360 view, so you can look at it online. And we have the line drawing, QR code, let's not forget that. We have the bit about insertion tabs, insertion holds, fold lines, you know those buyers, the legend where the blue circle, when you see that in the directions, it's referring to bending over a tab in a connection area. The green triangle means to insert the tab and twist it 90 degrees. And we have a bit about pulling and screwing to make, or pulling and screwing the tab 90 degrees to make it tighten. We have the newer part of the legend. When you see an E pointing at a side, it's telling you that's the engraved side. The NE is telling you it's a non-engraved side. This is not always as clear as you would think. And then attention point is trying to get you to pay attention to a certain thing, whether it's a particular tab, how something's lined up. It doesn't always have a description of what to pay attention to, so sometimes it can be a bit of a puzzle until it's too late. But sometimes it does tell you what it's trying to get your attention to. And we have the single solitary metal sheet, or the outline of... So we can find all the parts. They're all numbered. They're pointing to where they are on the sheets. We have a few parts that are colored in the same color. Those are typically the same part. So it looks like we have part 19. Uh, maybe that's a different shade. Okay. I don't have the best color perception. So I hate it when they're very similar and almost the same shade. Looks like those are the same and those are the same. This is two and these two. Usually they'll number one, 19. This one doesn't have a number. It's the same shade. We slide over to page two to the start of the assembly flowchart with part one and fold up the sides. Part two, fold up the sides, bring it down here, add three and four, and just follow the arrows, adding on the different parts. At the bottom, we flip to the inside to page three and continue Folding, shaping, adding, and just following the arrows. Once we get to the bottom here, of course, page four. Continue adding, folding, and following parts until you get all the way down here to the bottom. And you are finished putting it together. Let's talk tools. I have a pretty standard set of tools that I use in most every build. I have needle nose pliers. I have flat nose pliers. I have flush clippers. These are a must for me. They clip parts off the sheets quickly and cleanly. I have a set of precision tweezers, one with a very pointed end, one with the pointed end ground down slightly, a flat set with a sort of curved tip, useful for twisting tabs in slightly curved areas. I also have a pretty standard set of tweezers with a flat angled end. These come in one of the Iconics kits and I use them a lot. When it comes to shape and rounded parts, there are many options. I used dowel rods for a long time. I sharpened the ends of two of them with a pencil sharpener. These two are great for making cone shapes. Another option is a cheap drill bit set. The set has quite a few different sizes to choose from. Another option is a set of step mandrels. Ring pliers or round nose pliers can be found with jewelry making tools and work wonderfully for curving delicate and or hard to get to areas. Curved needle nose pliers to me are very useful for bending over longer thin areas that have obstructions that keep regular needle nose pliers from getting to them and being helpful. They can also be handy in tight places. We have our metal sheet. We have the instructions. We've looked them over. Some tools to get us started. Let's put this together.
Getting this inner part of the handle correct took a fair amount of patience and trial and error. It took quite a few tries and quite a few minutes to adjust part 5 and get the tabs into place. Eight, nine, ten, and eleven were quite a challenge with my big fingers, but with patience and the right approach I managed to get it all together.
My plan to just curve part 12 into place was not going as well as I thought it would. With shaping round parts, I take my best guess as to the size of drill bit or dowel rod, usually trying to guess a little bit big. I can easily work down a size or two if I need to, but opening the part back up and moving bigger is a little bit more difficult. Plus, too small and you might bend the part too much in one area. The front end of the gun was pinched together too much and I had to use something to pry it open to attach some of the parts.
I didn't like not being able to see the tabs to line them up with their slots. As always, however, with enough patience, I managed to line up the tabs and move on. I started to put the top half on first, then realized the bottom would not just slide into place. So I switched to the bottom tabs first, not realizing that I would not be able to slide the top over the barrel. I give you the assault rifle from Halo. Nifty looking little thing, rather complicated sort of gun. Wasn't it's certainly not one of the more difficult ones. It's one of the more easier Halo models I've built. Kind of in line with Master Chief's helmet, maybe just a tad tougher. It's got some different shapes and folds to it, so it comes together a little bit different than stuff that I'm accustomed to. But it comes together and it's along the easier one so if you're wanting to get into the halo stuff and you haven't built it and you want to start master chief's helmet and then maybe this and keep going from there so that leaves me just one more of the halo models to build provided they don't come out with more which tends to happen all right about the time i'm caught up now this model took almost two hours it did kind of feel like it took longer than that but in the end it, it went by fairly quickly it's really neat looking. There were a few places that stumped me, but I, I managed to get past them. So no real, no big headaches, no real big trouble. Just your usual challenges. And, my, and I might end up dabbing some glue on a couple of places that are loose. But yeah, this looks really neat. I just wish it sat on the display a little bit better than it did. And I'm going to end the same way as I always do. If you have any questions or comments, please feel free to leave them down below. Thank you for watching and keep on keeping on.